Welcome to The Global Pulse, a short video series where our experts break down a trending topic in international business and why it matters to you. Sri Lanka, an island nation of the southeast coast of India with 22 million people, has been going through severe economic and political crises over the past several months. The crisis was brought on by severe mismanagement of the economy. This mismanagement has been going on for several decades, but came to the fore over the last several months because of the global pandemic, as well as the war in Ukraine. The country ran out of foreign exchange to import food, fuel, or even medicines, and that really affected a wide swath of the population. And the population, especially the young people, took to the streets demonstrating against the current government and in fact asking for new leadership. This whole thing came to a head on the 13th of July when Gotabai Rajapaksa, the president, fled the country first to the Maldives and then to the Middle East via Singapore. Just a few weeks back, his brother, who was the Prime Minister, Mahinda Rajapaksa, also ran away from the capital on the 9th of May because the demonstrators essentially ransacked his house and set fire to it and were demonstrating really strongly for the removal of the Prime Minister, the President, and most of the leadership of the country. So finally, on the 21st of July, Sri Lanka voted in a new President. Actually, what happened was that the members of Parliament, mostly from Rajapaksa's old party, the SLPP, uh, following parliamentary procedure decided to choose Ranil Vikramasinghe as the next president. Now Ranil Vikramasinghe, when he ran for elections a few years back, uh, actually lost his seat. He was very, very unpopular and he continues to be really unpopular right now. The demonstrators uh, really want him to leave as well, but uh, based on parliamentary procedure, uh, you know, there was no choice except to choose him as the president. Ranil Vikramasinghe did not help his case by essentially, as his first act, going against the demonstrators and getting rid of all the structures and the uh, tents and various other things they had built uh, as a base from which they could actually make their voices heard to the government. In any case, the country and the new president have their work cut out for themselves. To begin with, uh, the, they really need the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, to come in and provide guarantees to future donors uh, that Sri Lanka will be a good bet. The IMF will help to restructure debt, but they also come in with their own conditions, many of which are very severe and might well hurt the poorest of, in the country. So one of the things that the IMF does and has done all over the world is to ask the government to cut subsidies and that way save money. The subsidies are definitely going to hurt the poor. So the, most recently, the IMF also has come up with some kind of cash transfer mechanisms to help the poorest of the poor. The second thing that they will ask the Sri Lankan government to do is to sell off all the state-owned enterprises that are making a loss. For example, uh, the electricity, utilities, and perhaps even the airline, and water utilities as well. So the hope is that if these things get privatized, that they would be run better and rather than losing money, that they would actually make a profit. Of course, there's a danger 
that uh, privatized utilities and privatized airlines might actually increase the price, thus adding to the already high inflation. The last thing that the IMF generally asks the country to do is to float its currency, meaning the understanding is that the currency is too low. As a result, uh, people import too much and don't export enough. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what the IMF does. Once the IMF policy is in place, uh, other low lenders like the World Bank, the IDB, and perhaps commercial banks as well, uh, might actually lend money to Sri Lanka uh, so that there is sufficient foreign exchange and help, uh, you know, allay uh, the economic conditions. Of course, uh, countries like uh, China and Japan would also have to be involved and might have to actually help restructure the debt by uh, taking what's called a haircut or else kind of uh, making sure that their debt is not necessarily paid in full. The one country that has been helping Sri Lanka is India, which has provided a bridge loan until the IMF policies are put into place. So the bridge loan allows Sri Lanka a facility of three to four billion dollars from which they can borrow in order to buy whatever essential things they need from outside the country and take care of uh, the economic conditions that the people are facing right now. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how quickly this IMF restructuring happens and how quickly foreign lenders are going to help Sri Lanka get over this severe economic crisis. Until then, of course, the Sri Lankan cricket team is happily playing test matches against Pakistan, having actually beaten Australia in a previous series of cricket games.